Hello everyone, myself Dr. Padmaja, Associate Professor, Department of CAC, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. In this video, let us discuss about a number of problems related to list concept in Python. So, first of all, let us start with what do you mean by a list data type, how to create a list and how to work with the list. So, a list is an ordered and mutable data type and or you can say that it is a mutable Python container. So, it is one of the most important and most popular data structures in Python. So, how to create a list? So, to create a list, normally square brackets are used and the list of elements stored inside a list is separated by commas. Now, one of the important property of list is, list is ordered and it is changeable and it allows duplicate values also. So, if you combine these three properties, then you can simply say that lists are mutable. Now, mutable and immutable. There are two types of objects. One is called mutable and immutable. Mutable means which are modifiable. Immutable means which are not modifiable. So, tuple is immutable whereas lists are mutable. And list items are indexed. That is from left to right, you can give the index number starting from 0, 1, 2 and so on. And from right to left, the list items are indexed with negative indexing, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. So, in both way, indexing can be applied, both positive indexing and negative indexing. So, indexing in a list are of two types. One is called positive indexing, one is called negative indexing. So, positive indexing starts from 0, moving from left to right. And negative indexing starts from right to left and the numbers starts from minus 1, minus 2 and so on. Now, let us see one example of a list. So, how to create a list? For creating a list, we use normally these square brackets. And list can contain heterogeneous data elements. So, it is the accessing of the list elements are like arrays in C language, but arrays are normally homogeneous types, whereas list is heterogeneous type. So, you can write down a number of data items of different data types like hello is a string over here, 1 is an integer, 4.63 is a float value, true is a boolean value, world is a string, similarly false is also a string and so on. So, you can take multiple data types or a heterogeneous collection of data types and you can create a list. Now, the advantage of the list data type is we can apply the slicing operators on list. So, suppose if I am writing a of 2 colon 5. So, whenever you apply slicing, so 2 is nothing but the start value and 5 is nothing but the stop value. That means it will take the starting value is inclusive whereas the stop value is exclusive. So, the start value is 2 and stop value is 5. So, 2, 3, 4, these 3 data items are retrieved by writing 2 colon 5. So, you can see over here, this is at index number 0, this is at index number 1, index number 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6. So, 2 to 5 means 2nd, 3rd and 4th. So, 2nd is 4.63, 3rd is true and world. So, these 3 are retrieved. Similarly, if you simply write a colon, that means you didn't mention the start and stop values, then by default, it gives you the complete list as the output. Next, if you want to mention with a step, so you can write down the slicing with a start value, stop value and step value. So you can write like this, start, colon, stop, colon, step. If you are writing like this, then from minus 1, it is negative indexing. From minus 1, stop is minus 3 with a step of minus 1. So, it will give you minus 1 and minus 2 because at minus 3, it has to stop. So, you can see here, this is minus 1 negative indexing. 
So you can see here, this is negative index in minus 1, this is minus 2, this is minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6 and minus 7. So here, minus 1 to minus 3. So that means starting start value is minus 1, stop value is minus 3. So minus 3 will not come. So false and 2.0 will be the output. Similarly, list are modifiable. That means you can replace any existing data value with a new data item. For example, we want to change a of 1 is equal to 2. What is there at a of 1? a of 1 is containing 1 already. Now you want to change this value with 2. Yes, we can modify it. So after modifying, if you will print the list, you will see that at a of 1, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So at a of 1, the value is modified to 2. So that's why lists are mutable, that is ordered, modifiable and changeable. It is all allowed in list. Now, how to create a list? So lists can be created with the help of square bracket, but lists also can be created using the list method or the constructor. So how to create an empty list first? So suppose L1 is an empty list, just write down the method name list, just open the bracket and close it. This is a list method or list constructor. So if you print that list, then you will see that one open list, that one empty list is created. Next, if you want to create a list from a string, so it is possible. So to the list constructor or method, just give a string. Suppose the string is Amanda. So a list is the output. This is a list is created by taking individual characters of the string. So list to string is also possible with the help of this list method. Next, from a tuple, you can convert a tuple into a list. Suppose here tuple is mid, val and mon, Monday. These three are the three items in the tuple. So from the tuple, we have created a list. So output is a list. So you have to write list and you give a tuple within bracket. So that tuple, this is the tuple. This tuple is now converted into a list. Similarly, you can convert a dictionary into a list also. So you can see here, this is a dictionary which is given. So containing some keys and key value pairs, this is key and its value. A number of key value pairs are there in a dictionary. So that dictionary, we can convert it into a list. So you can see that whenever you are converting into a list, only the keys have come, not the values. So hydrogen, helium, carbon, oxygen, these are the keys that has come to the list. So a dictionary can also be converted into a list. Next is called a set. So a set is an unordered collection of data items. So a set can also be converted into a list. So you can see here, this is a set containing three data items. So Whenever you will convert into a list, write list of a set you give and it is converting now into a list. As it is unordered, so the items are now in different order than the original set. Similarly, if you want to create a list from a range object also, you can create. Suppose I am giving list range of 15. So what are the values in range of 15? 15 is the stop value. So 0 to 14, this is 0 to 5, 14, all elements are kept inside a list. So you can create a list from range of range function also. So these are the different ways of creating list from a string, from a tuple, from a dictionary, from a set and also from a range of values we have created using the list constructor. Now the next topic is how to access the elements in a list. So to access the Elements in a list, normally list, uh, lists are ordered sequence of elements and like any other ordered container, we can use the indexing number to access the elements from a list. So by default, the index always starts from 0. So to access any element from the list, we have to provide within the square bracket, we can provide what is the index number and at what index, at which index you want to retrieve or access one element. So example, for example, there is a list of cities. So Madras, Hyderabad, Velour and Surat, these are the list of cities available. So Madras is there at index number 0, Hyderabad at index number 1, 
Velur at index number 2 and Surat is at index number 3. Now, city is of 0, if you will write, then you can see that at index number 0, the city matras is there. So, we will get the output as matras. Similarly, city is at third index. You can see that Surat is there at third index. You will get the output as Surat. Similarly, city is of 4. Fourth index is not there. That means it is list out of bound range error. So, you will get an error over here which is called the index error because you are you have provided one index which is not there in the list. So, this is called an index error. So, Python provides you or helps you to indicate different types of errors, name error, attribute error, value error, index error and so on. But here the mistake is in terms of an index. So, that is why it is called an index error. So, list index out of range over here. Next is how to do or how to apply slicing operator. So, slicing is one of the popular and one powerful mechanism in Python that if you want to find out any portion of the data or if you want to work with a part of data in a list or tuple or anything, then you can apply slicing. So, the normal slicing, the it contains the slicing operator contains three things. One is called start value, stop value and step value. These three things are you have to provide. And whereas the start is inclusive, whatever the value you provide in start that is inclusive, that means it will start from that. And end is exclusive, that means excluding that value up to that or before that value, it is going to print you or it is going to provide you. But stop value is exclusive and step is optional. If you want to provide this step, you can provide. Otherwise, by default, the step is treated to be a step of 1. Now, let us look at one example. Suppose there is a list of cities. Now, I am writing your print the cities colon 2 I am writing. That means start I have not provided, but only stop I have provided up to 2. Up to 2. This is only the stop value I have provided. So, what will happen? By default, it will take the start value as index number 0. So, the value at index number 0 and 1 will be displayed and when it goes to index number 2, it will stop. So, so the output is at index number 0, we have Madras. At index number 1, we have Hyderabad. So, you can see that it will display the output at index number 0 and 1. When it reaches to index number 2, it will stop. Next. Suppose you are writing 0 double colon 2, that means it will access the values from, from start, stop is not given and you are with a step of 2 it is given. So, so you can see that at index number 0 and with a step of 2, so that is why it has skipped Hyderabad and now it is showing value. Okay? So, as there are only 4 values, so you will get the output as Madras and value with a step of 2. So, stop is not given. So, by default, it will take up to the end of the list. Right. Now, suppose if you are writing print the cities 2 colon, that means start is given, stop is not given. So, it will treat the stop up to end. Step is not given. So, by default, step is 1. So, start is at 2. So, value will be started. Then, stop is not given. So, it will go up to end of the list. So, value and surat will be the output. So, in this way, slicing can be used by writing the start, stop and step value, but all the three values are not mandatory. So, if you do not mention anything also, suppose if you will mention cities of only double colon, if you will write like this, then start by default, it will take it as 0, stop by default up to the end of the list and step of 1. So, it will print the entire, entire list it is going to print. So, start, stop and step values are not mandatory, but if you provide, then it, it means that, that you want the ranges from where to where you want to print. So, this is the way Python slicing operator should be used. Next, how to modify the items in a list? How will you modify an item? So, modifying an item or changing an item inside a list can only be possible with the help of again indexing. So, you have to provide the index or index in square bracket so that you can modify an item. For example, let us look at the list of products. Products is a list containing table, chair, lamp, 
clothes set and bed. These are the items. So table is at index number 0, chair it is at index number 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now I want to modify a single item from this particular list. So you have to write products of 1 is equal to self. Okay, products of 1 already contains your, your product of 1 contains chair that will be modified to self. So, if you will print, then you can see that print products, if you will do, if you can observe over here that the chair is now replaced by shelf. So, it is modifiable through index number. Similarly, I am writing, I want to modify multiple items in a list. So, product of colon 2 I have written. Start value I have not given. Stop value is given at 2. That means, the items at 0th index and 1st index are modifiable. So, what are the items you want to modify? Pillow and desk I want to modify. So, at index number 0, table will be modified with pillow. If you print the output, you can see here. And similarly, at, at index number 1, we have chair we have modified to self that is now modified to desk. So, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 if you will see over here, then you can see that these first two items are modifiable. That means multiple items you can also modify in a list. Next, how to remove elements from a list? So, if you want to remove elements in a list, then you can use these three ways of removing. One is called make use of the del keyword. Second one is called use the remove method or use the pop method. So, these are the three ways of removing the element from a list. So, using the del keyword, using the index number, you can remove a particular element or if you want to delete the entire list, you can simply write del followed by the list name. Similarly, if you want to remove a particular element, you can use this list dot remove method. Otherwise, you can write down the pop method. So, these are the three different ways for removing elements in a list. So, let us understand how to remove it. So, for example, we have taken the similar example. There is a list of products. Okay. Table is at index number 0, chair, then. So, I am writing the index numbers of this item. So, there are 7 items or items in this list. 7 products are there. Now, if I am writing delete the first product. So, del product of 0. So, product of 0 is table. So, table will be removed from the list completely. So, if you will print the products, then you can find here that table is no more. Next, if you want to delete an item through negative indexing from right to left, it is also possible. So, del product of minus 1, you know that computer is at minus 1, self minus 2, bed minus 3, from right to left the indexing number is like this. So, product of minus 1, will remove the computer. So, if you will print the products, you can see that computer is not there in this list. Similarly, product of multiple items if you want to delete, so you can use slicing. So, colon 2, that means the items which is there at index number 0 and 1 will be removed. So, you can see here at 0 and 1, the items are removed. So, now close set, bed and self is there. So, two items are removed. Now, Similarly, if you want to remove the entire list, so similarly, you can simply write Dell products. So, Dell products, products is the name of the list. So, entire list will be removed. So, be careful while using this particular keyboard. Now, after that, if you want to print what is there inside the products list, you will find that it is a name error because that name, the list name or list object is doesn't exist now. List object doesn't exist. So, if you want to give to the print option that print this list, then you will find that it is a name error. So, as I told, different types of error mechanisms are there. As the list object is not found, so it is showing you naming error here. So, this is the simplest way of using the del keyword. Similarly, you can use remove and pop also. Now, if you want to insert an element in a list also, you can use two ways to employ this or to do this. One is called the insert method, one is called the append method. So, append will always add the item 
at the end of the list but if you want to add any element at a particular position inside the list then you can use insert method so insert i comma x so where x is the element inserted at i th location so that is the meaning of insert method so these are the two ways of doing insertion in a list so insert method or append method you can use so we have discussed now apart from this insertion methods deletion methods and how to access the elements in a list there are number of other functions or methods available in python so let us now move on to programming where we will move on to our switch over to your ideal and we will execute a number of programs using list now let us write first create a list and access the elements from the list so how to create a list suppose if i'll take a list l1 is equal to a set of numbers so i have taken a set of numbers over here list of numbers then how to display those numbers so i can write down a for loop for i in l1 or i can write for i in simply i can write down l1 so print the items or print l1 of i now let us save this program and check what you are getting if you run this program so what you are getting list of i i index bound error you are getting so what you will do we will write write down the range function so let us write down let us write down the range function from 0 to 7 let us write down so okay now whenever you are writing the range function from 0 to 7 you can see that the elements of the list are displayed okay now if you want to mention the negative range also it is also allowed suppose i want to display the numbers from minus 1 up to minus 6 then also you can display the values let us write with a step of minus 1 yes with a step of minus 1 you can see that the values are now displayed from right to left now in the similar manner now let us go for a program where we will show the list functions or list methods we will demonstrate so for example there is a list l1 containing some numbers set of numbers let us see up to 800 we have written and let us make some numbers as repetitive okay because repetition is also allowed in the list so let us print the list first now so far i have written a list and i have displayed the content of the list okay let me remove one or two items from here okay now after that i want to apply the max function find the maximum number from the list so print the maximum number is 
how much. So you can simply write max of L1. Similarly, if you want to find out the minimum number, you can write print the minimum number is the minimum value. Okay. Now, similarly, if you want to find out what is the length of the list, so you can write like this, print the length of the list is how much. You can use the function len, len of l1. So let us, so far, let us see the output of this code. You can see, first you have displayed the list, then you will, you will see the maximum number is 800, minimum is 100, the length of the list is 10. Okay. So let us continue with some more function. <coughs> let us use the count function. Now, print number of times a particular element occurs number of times 100 occurs in this list okay so we'll apply count that is you can directly write l1 dot count of 100 now look at here you can see that the 100 number 100 appears twice so this is the way you can apply count function okay next we will go for we want to find out the index number of a particular element so we will use index function so how to use print the index number of suppose 400 is what is the index number of 400? So, L1 dot index of 400. So, let us see the output. You can see that index number of 400 is at third index it is available. Yes, it is available at third index. Right. Now, I want to remove a particular element from the list. So, I want to use the remove function. So, what I will do, L1 is the list dot, I will use the method remove. L1 dot remove, suppose I want to remove 400. Then I will write down print after removing 400 from the list. What is the list? How it looks? You can check it out. So, this is L1. Now, run and see. You can see here, after removing 400, 400 is no more in the list. So, this way, you can remove a particular number from the list. Now, I want to append I want to go for appending a new number into my list. How should I append? So, append function. You have to write list dot append. I want to add a number called 1000. Okay. Then simply I can print the list and check it out whether 1000 is added to the list or not. So, you can see the output. Now, 1000 is appended to the list. Similarly, if you want to check insert function or insert method, then L1 dot insert. Suppose I want to insert 50, the element 50 at fifth location. Then I can print the list L1 to see whether it is inserted or not. 
So you can see over here. Now the value of 50. Just a second. Let me write insert. Let me write insert 5 comma the value is 50. Yes. So you can see that 50 is inserted into the list at fifth location. Okay. So first insert at which location and which value. So 5 comma 50. First one is the location. Second one is the value. So this way you can insert an item into this list. Similarly, suppose you want to reverse the list. So, L1 dot reverse. L1 dot reverse method is there. Reverse function. So, L1 dot reverse then reprint the list to check whether it is reversed or not. Now, you can see that there is an error somewhere we have written li yes this is l1 we will change it now again run it yes now you can see that now the list is reversed okay so this way reverse is also used now if you want to apply the sorting function sort function if you want to apply then how will you apply so l1 dot sort and then print the list to see whether it sorting has happened or not. So you can check the yes you can see now the elements are now in sorted order. So this way sorting works. Next if you want to copy and create another list by taking the replica of this if you want to copy then I can write L2 is equal to L1 dot copy method. Okay. Now if I will print L2 then I will see L2 is the exact copy of L1. So you can check it out here. So this is my L2 which is a copy of L1 already. Okay. So if you want you can write down the new copied list is so this is the new copied list l2 is created with the help of copy method now if you want to use the clear method clear method i want to clear the list by deleting all elements from the list. So what I can do L2 dot clear I can use to clear the list and if you want to print that the new list is L2 then you can see the changes over here. Let us run it. Yes you can see that now the new list is completely empty all the elements are cleared. So these are the number of functions which are available in list. So using this you can do a number of programming. Now if you want to repeat repeat the list elements by a number of times then you have to go for star operator using star operator. Okay. Now let us create a list L3. L3 is equal to suppose within square bracket the four numbers are there. It's a small list. Okay. Print. Repeat the elements of the list by three times okay then what do you have to write you have to write down the list l3 multiplied with three so multiplication is known as the repetition operator so if you write this 
let us let me put up to this into comment lines from the beginning let me put this up to comment lines okay now save and run this code so you can see here that 1 2 3 4 is repeated three times so this way you can repeat the content of the list now let us move on to do some more programming using list let us take a new file and the program is to print numbers between 100 and 200 separated by comma. So, take a num list and let us write down a for loop for i in range of we want to take the numbers from 100 to 200. So, 100 is the starting number, stopping number is 200 and we want to display if the i value is divisible by 6 okay and i value is not divisible by 5 okay some conditions you have written the numbers in the range 100 to 200, first time 100 will be taken, then 101, 102. Every number will be tested for this condition. If the number is divisible by 6 and the number is not divisible by 5, okay, then what we will do, we will append this numbers to this num list. So, num list dot append method. So, we will convert this into string suppose. So, str of i suppose I am converting. Okay. I am appending in the form of strings. And then I want to display these numbers. Print the numbers are. Okay. If you want to join through comma, then you can give comma and write down joy num underscore list. Okay, let us save this program and run it. Yes, so you can see that the numbers from 100 to 200, each number is tested, then it is stored into the list. Okay, but it is before that it is converted into strings and separated by commas. So, this is a simple example how to work with a list. Now, let us go for another example. Write a program to do sorting of multiple strings. Now, take a list of names or name list is equal to initial it is suppose empty and read how many names you want to read. So, int of input of enter Suppose number of countries. How many countries you want to enter into the num list? Okay. Now each each name. Suppose I want to read five country names. So each country name should be appended to my name list first. So for that I have to write down for i in range of one to num plus one. Okay, all five names I want to suppose add into into my list. So read one one country name and then append it to the name list. So input enter the name of the country. 
So read one country name and after that you append it. So append to the name list, name list dot append, append this to this name. Okay. Now once the loop will run five times, five different country names you have to add and it is appended to the name list. Then, then finally let us print the list. Okay. Print name list. And what we will do, we want to sort it. So we will use the sort method. So name list dot method name is sort. So apply the sort method, then print the country names in sorted order are name list okay it is already sorted yes so let us save this program then run it okay and then suppose number of countries are 5 name of the country suppose India then Japan China Korea Singapore Yes. Now you can see that the every name is appended to the list first. Then they are ordered. So they are in sorted order. By default, it is sorting from your ascending order. So by default, it is in ascending order. So this, these are the ways you can read five different country names. You can sort it and you can display the list. In this video, we have learned the basics of listed data structure or container. And we have understood the list methods and we have also understood how to append and remove the elements from the list followed by we have executed a number of programs using list. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.